The Bill of Rights is created to protect and safeguard every individual from the violation of their constitutional right. It is the duty of the Constitution to prevent such from happening. One of these rights that are guaranteed by the Constitution is the freedom to travel and the liberty of abode. Let us travel through this right and look into the former Gloria Macapagal Arroyo versus Laila de Lima's case. High drama unfolding live on TV. Tang 2011, tatlong beses na operahan si dating Pangulong Gloria Arroyo. Uh, we are continuing following a story on a possible the status quo, by the Supreme which is the existence of the watch list order against the Arroyos, remains. the liberty of abode and of travel were treated under one provision. Section 1, Article 3 there reads, the liberty of abode and of changing the same within the limits prescribed by law shall not be impaired. The 1973 Constitution altered the 1935 text explicitly including the liberty of travel. The 1987 Constitution has split the two freedoms into two distinct sentences and treats them differently. To wit, the liberty of a vote and of changing the same within the limits prescribed by law shall not be impaired except upon lawful order of the court. Neither shall the right to travel be impaired except in interest of national security, public safety, or public health as may be provided by law. The phraseology in the 1987 Constitution was a reaction to the ban of the international travel imposed under the Marcus regime when there was a travel processing center which issued certificate of eligibility to travel upon application of an interested party. Liberty of abode involves the liberty of choosing where one lives to live or change it whenever one wishes and to do so for whatever cost as long as it is not against the law. Right to travel refers to the freedom to move from the Philippines to other nations or inside the Philippines as provided by law. It excludes the individual's right to repatriation which is protected by the international law and is distinct from but related to the freedom of travel. Within the broad definition of liberty, freedom of abode and the ability to move freely are included. Every person has the right to liberty, which includes the ability to move about and the freedom to use one's faculties in ways that are permitted by law, as well as the right to live and work where one chooses 
or where one can best pursue one's goals in life. Nagpalabas ang Sandigan Bayan ng whole departure order o HBO laban kay dating Pangulong Gloria Arroyo. Kaugnay po yan ang kinakaharap niyang kasong plunder para sa umano'y paglustay sa mahigit 300 milyong pisong pondo ng PCSO. Inisyohan din ng HDO ang siyam na iba pang dating opisyal ng PCSO at Commission on Audit. I am requesting a loud departure order to seek medical specialists in USA, Germany, Singapore, Italy, Spain, and Austria for my hypothyroidism and metabolic bone mineral disorder. I hereby submit the following documents. These guarantees serve to emphasize the individual's freedom which is generally protected by due process clause and its significance in a free society. They are nevertheless bound by particular limitations. According to Section 6, Article 3 of our Constitution, the right to one's place of abode may only be restricted upon lawful order of the court and only to the extent permitted by law. This means that whatever rights are restricted in a court's order or not, they must do so in line with the legal requirements. In other words, they cannot be restricted at the officer's discretion. The freedom to travel is likewise unrestricted because it is subject to inherent statutory and constitutional limitations. With the submitted documents, it appears that first, there appears to be discrepancy on the medical condition of the applicant as stated in her affidavit and the medical abstract of her physician. Second, there appears to be no urgent and immediate medical emergency to seek medical treatment abroad. And third, from the lists of countries, some of which were not for purposes of medical consultation but for attending the conferences. Fourth, the applicant's undertaking of returning to the Philippines upon the completion of her medical treatment means that her return will always depend on the treatment which with her condition could last indefinitely. And fifth, for the chosen destinations, the Philippines has no existing extradition treaty. Section 6 provides that neither shall the right to travel be impaired except in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health as may be provided by law. There are other recognized exceptions wherein the right to travel may be impaired. Some statutes which specifically provides for the impairment of the right to travel are the following. Number 1. The Human Security Act of 2010 or Republic Act Number. 9372 provides that the law restricts the right to travel of an individual charged with the crime of terrorism even though such person is out of bail. Second, the Philippine Passport Act of 1996 or Republic Act number 8239 states that pursuant to this law, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs or his authorized consular officer may refuse the issuance of restricts the use of or withdraw a passport of a Filipino citizen. Third, the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2003 or Republic Act Number no. 9208 provides that, pursuant to the provisions thereof, the Bureau of Immigration, in order to manage migration and curb trafficking in persons, issued Memorandum Order Number no. 2011-011, allowing its Travel Control and Enforcement Unit to offload passengers with fraudulent travel documents, doubtful purpose of travel, including possible victims of human trafficking from our ports. 
Number 4, the Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos Act of 1995 or Republic Act number 8042 as amended by Republic Act number 1022 states that enforcement of said law, the Philippine Enforcement Administration may refuse to issue deployment permit to a specific country that effectively prevents our migrant workers to enter such country. Number 5, the Act on Violence Against Women and Children or Republic Act number 9262 provides that the law restricts movement of an individual against whom the protection order is intended. And lastly, number six, Inter-Country Adoption Act of 1995 or Republic Act number 8043 states that the Inter-Country Adoption Board may issue rules restrictive of an adoptee's right to travel to protect the Filipino child from abuse, exploitation, trafficking, and or sale or any practice in connection with adoption which is harmful, detrimental, or prejudicial to the child. The restrictions that logically follow from source are known as inherent restrictions on the right to travel. They are quite simple and have power built in. The ability of trial courts to forbid someone accused of committing a crime from leaving to the country is an example of such an inherent limitation. The court must grant authorization in this situation. The ability of trial courts to forbid someone accused of committing a crime from leaving the country is an example of such an inherent limitation. The court must grant authorization in this situation. Regarding the ability of courts to control international travel, the court has the inherent authority to administratively supervise all courts and their personnel. As a result, the court issued OCA Circle No. 49-2003, which mandates that judges and court employees obtain a travel authorization from the Office of Court Administrator before they can travel internationally even while on authorized leave of absence or during free time. In order to ensure the proper administration of justice, it was issued as a regulation rather than a restriction on the members and judiciary's right to travel internationally in an official capacity. Restrict means to restrain or forbid an action to regulate is to govern or guide in accordance with a regulation. Another is the inherent power of the Legislative Department to conduct a Congressional inquiry in aid of legislation. In the exercise of legislative inquiry, the Congress has the power to issue a subpoena and subpoena duces tecum to witness in any part of the country. Signed by the Chairperson or Acting Chairperson and the Speaker or Acting Speaker of the House. Or, in the case of Senate, signed by its chairman or in his absence by the acting chairman and approved by the Senate President. Right to travel vis-a-vis -vis the right to bail. A court has the power to prohibit a person admitted to bail from leaving the Philippines. This is a necessary consequence of the nature and function of a bail bond, which has remained unchanged whether under the 1935, 1973, or the 1987 Constitution. A person facing criminal charges may be restrained by the court from leaving the country or, if abroad, compelled to return. Also, an accused release on bail may be rearrested without the necessity of a warrant if they attempt to depart from the Philippines without prior permission of the court where the case is pending. Right to travel versus right to return to one's own country. The right to return to one's country is guaranteed in the Philippines, even though it is not one of the rights that are specifically stated in the Bill of Rights. It is a widely acknowledged principle of international law, and as such, it is incorporated into legislation in accordance with the incorporation doctrine. It differs from the freedom to move about and is protected under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Thus, Department of Justice Circular Number 41 is hereby declared unconstitutional. All issuances which were released pursuant thereto are hereby declared null and void.
Freedom is not the right to do as you please. It, it is, is the, the liberty, liberty to do as you ought.